UFC 288 is shaping up to be really nice. So first we have Eljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo being rebooked for that card, and it looks like they're going to headline it. There's still some time to see if there's another championship fight, but that fight is excellent. And we're also getting Charles Oliveira versus Benil Dariush, which is official now. They've been talking about it for a while, but both guys have signed on the contract. They're going to be fighting each other, 100% happening, and that means a lot for the much-talked-about lightweight division, and I cannot wait for that. I mean, part of me feels like, man, Oliveira and Dariush is actually the biggest fight on the card. More people are probably going to be watching the card for that fight, but you do absolutely have to have Sterling against Cejudo as the main event, right? I wouldn't be mad, though, if they went the other way. I'm really happy for Cejudo's return, and up against one of the greatest bantamweights of all time. People don't look at Sterling that way, but he definitely has the resume he beat some amazing fighters in his career he's been doing it for such a long time this is going to be his third title defense and if he does it he will break the ufc bantamweight record for most consecutive title defenses in the bantamweight division's history technically no one has had more than two dominic cruz and tj dillashaw both had two title defenses the only thing that kind of goes against it was that tj throughout his career after losing and then winning the belt again he did get another title defense which adds it up to three and for dominic cruz he won the belt in wec defended it twice there and then he was given the ufc belt and defended that two more times before having to vacate it and then he won it again and defended it afterward against uriah faber so it is a bit of a tricky situation with dominic cruz's whole title but technically speaking, no one has ever defended the bantamweight title in the UFC three times consecutively, and Aljamain Sterling may be the only fighter in history to do it, and this might be his toughest matchup in his career. Henry Cejudo's wrestling style is something that on paper should give Sterling some problems. Trying to take down Henry Cejudo is ironically a very tall task. The guy is 5'4", and as we saw with the Volkanovski and Islam fight, height could definitely matter up against a wrestler like that, especially someone like Cejudo, who's potentially the greatest wrestler in UFC history. It's translated very well from his Olympic days to MMA, and Sterling has some awkward shots. He will dig in for the single leg first and try to chain wrestle with you and just drag you to the ground some way. He might even pull guard on Cejudo. He is a big guy, so he would force Cejudo to fall with him. But Sterling is crafty. He has a lot of experience. He could find different ways to get the fight to the ground and potentially could even try to choke Cejudo when it comes to the stand-up and maybe Imanari rolls will come out of nowhere. Wrestlers generally don't have a good time against leg submissions, right? Leg locks, heel hooks, and maybe Sterling goes that direction of trying to get the fight down. He has a long range, awkward angles with his punches. Doesn't really have that kind of knockout power to hurt Suhudo in my opinion, but some of the head kicks could come out there and blindside him, potentially even behind the hands. You would have to think that Cejudo on paper has most of the advantages when it comes to like striking power, the speed on the feet, not only with his actual strikes, but his footwork is really fast. He's able to move around quickly. He has the entire wrestling advantage. He's dealt with great submission artists like Demetrius Johnson on the ground, and he's dealt with scarier strikers on the feet like a prime Marlon Moraes. And remember that Marlon Moraes knocked Eljamain Sterling out back then too. And even guys who move around really well like Dominic Cruz and TJ Dillashaw. He's dealt with a lot of different kind of styles. And honestly, a lot of things that people think Sterling will give Cejudo problems with, he's fought guys who've done those things better than he does. The thing that Sterling has that nobody else does is the submission ability. And that is where the biggest problem comes for Cejudo is the submission ability. I know Demetrius Johnson has really good submissions, but it's not the same. The length that Aljamain has with the different kind of submissions he attacks for is just much more of an issue to deal with when it comes to like crazy unpredictable strikes he's fought Cruz that does the same thing TJ Dillashaw could be very unorthodox he's fought well-rounded guys like Demetrius Johnson although not as long and as big as Sterling so who has a lot more experience against different styles than people want to think but Sterling always finds a way to get it done but I ultimately do think that at least on paper Henry Cejudo should be able to beat Sterling, as it's a really good style for Cejudo to go up against, especially for his return. And we all know what he's going to try to do after. He's probably going to target Volkanovski, and that would be something to see, especially if he can get by and make this fight easy with Sterling. But not only for Cejudo, it seems like Sterling also wants Volkanovski as well. So it seems like the winner of this fight would probably just jump up to 145, and I know Sterling will do it because Marab is in the top five, right? And he believes that Marab can be champion, so... He's probably going to give up his spot. He is a big guy for the 135 pound division. Go up to 145. And if he beats Cejudo, I think he should get an immediate title shot at Volk after Volk fights Yair. And then talking about the Charles Oliveira and Benil Dariush fight. I mean, this is a scary one for both guys. There's a finish that's probably going to happen here. Oliveira does not let go of the gas. 
goes right after you and we've seen Benil get into some crazy wild brawls both guys hit really hard but Oliveira has more striking capabilities of hurting the opponent he throws more things out there his kicks are better his knees are better his fundamental boxing is honestly better but Benil has some heavy hands that overhand of his is something that can absolutely crush Oliveira who doesn't move his head at all but coming off that kind of loss a fighter will usually make adjustments and not come out the exact same way in the next fight. Oliver lost a lot against Islam Makhachev, right? The long win streak and his title. And he got finished on the ground. We're probably going to see a little bit different of an Oliveira in this fight with Dariush. At least approach it a bit differently. Maybe he'll go straight to the wrestling right away. Maybe he will not strike as much. Maybe he'll look to counter and be sharper on the back foot if it comes to that. But the thing is, I could see Oliveira pushing Dariush back for most of the fight because Gamrot kind of did the same thing even though Gamrot was losing. While even Dariush is winning a fight, he will still back up away from you to try to line you up for his big left hand. But what if Dariush actually shoots a takedown? What if he tries to get Oliveira to the ground? That would be really interesting. We all know Dariush's grappling is really high level, but is on the same level as Oliveira's. This is a kind of fight that could show us if it's there or not. Is he really on that same level? He has excellent control. He has great submission ability. He has a great eye for submissions. Probably not as good as Oliveira's, because Oliveira's the greatest submission artist in UFC history. He's really quick with getting a grip on you for those. But I think Darius is more traditional style, and making it a bit slower, especially if he's on top of Oliveira, could cause some problems there. But I ultimately do think that on the ground, Oliveira should have the advantage, and on the feet, it's like 50-50 for me. Olives has more offensive potential, like he has more he could do while moving forward and attacking Darius. But Darius's defense and his countering could really do Oliveira in, man. That's the scariest part there. Oliver walks into like a big left hand and gets dropped. And these punches are not like Islam's. Darius has some really heavy hands. And he has a better ability to knock you out with one punch. And with all the damage Oliveira has taken in his career, it would not shock me at all. I really don't want to see it. But it would not shock me at all if Darius puts him down and keeps him there with one punch. But if I were to make a prediction here, ah, this is a scary one, man. But... I will go with Oliveira, and I think he's going to win by a submission, be the first man to submit Dariush, which is a huge achievement for Oliveira's career. And potentially, if he does it fast enough and dominant enough, he could get that rematch against Islam. But if it's like a back and forth fight and stuff, it could go to someone like Fazeev. I do think though, if Benil beats Oliveira, doesn't really matter how he does it, unless it's like some DQ or something crazy like that. I think he should get a title shot regardless. He has the win streak. He's beat some decent guys. I think with a win over Oliveira, he should 100% get a title shot. UFC 288 is really looking nice. I hope there's more good fights like this and perhaps we get another title fight on there.